Connections at Home. My name is Hannah and I'm the Museum Experience Assistant Manager at the Louisiana Children's Museum. You may have seen me splashing around the Mississippi River in our Move with the River Gallery. Today, I'm going to continue to explore my love of the water by taking a closer look at where it comes from. Water is all around us. While playing around your house, outside, or in our Move with the River Gallery, you may find yourself wondering, where does all this water come from? The source of the Mississippi River is all the way in Minnesota at Lake Itasca. The Mississippi River also gets a lot of water from tributary rivers, other rivers that feed into the Mississippi River, like the Ohio River and the Arkansas River. A lot of water in the Mississippi River and its tributaries comes from rainwater. But where does rainwater come from? Come on, let's head inside and find out. Today, we'll explore this question and others. Like where else does rainwater go? And how can we use it? By creating our own cloud systems using a jar or cup with water, shaving cream, and food coloring. All right, let's get started. Rain is formed in the water cycle. In the water cycle, water changes from a liquid, solid, or gas through the processes of evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Water can be found in lots of places in our world, like in the ocean, underground, in the atmosphere that surrounds our planet, and on land. When the sun shines on Earth, it heats up our different sources of water and changes them from a liquid into a vapor or gas, which then rises into the air. This water vapor rises really high into the sky where it starts to cool down and condense. When the water vapor condenses, it's turning from a gas back into a liquid in the form of a cloud. When enough of the water vapor condenses, the little water droplets get heavier and heavier until they're heavy enough to fall to the ground in the form of rain or snow, which we call precipitation. Now that we know all about the water cycle, it's time to see if we can recreate it. First, we're going to fill our cup with water. The clear water in our cup represents the air or the water vapor as it's evaporated from the Earth's surface. It will take about two cups or 16 ounces to fill my jar. Next, we're going to make our cloud by putting a little bit of shaving cream on top of the water. Our shaving cream represents the water droplets that have condensed to make a cloud. Once we have a nice fluffy cloud, we're going to put a few drops of food coloring right on top. The food coloring represents rainwater forming in the cloud. Remember, as our rain droplets get heavier, gravity will eventually force the water to fall to Earth as raindrops. Can you count how long it will take for your raindrops to fall to the bottom of your cup? Now that we've mastered making rain clouds, let's practice making predictions and testing them. Now, I have three rain cloud jars and I'm going to add different amounts of food coloring to each jar. Let's write out our prediction of which jar we think will rain first. I predict that the rain cloud with the most drops will rain first because it's heavier. Can you find the spots that I've underlined in blue? In these spaces, you should write your guesses as you craft your prediction. In jar one, I'm going to add five drops. One, two, three, four, five. In jar two, I'm going to add 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And in jar three, I'm going to add 15 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
Which cloud do you think will rain first? You may want to pause this video here while you test your predictions. Was your prediction supported? Can you tell me why? The beautiful thing about science is that you can continue to repeat and modify your experiments. So get creative with your rain clouds. What do you think will happen if you add even more drops? What about if you add more shaving cream or use less water? Get designing, scientists. Now it's time to think about where all that rainwater goes. Some of it is absorbed by plants. Some of it falls back into the ocean, and some of it even falls into Lake Itasca. Lake Itasca is the beginning of the Mississippi River, which means that a raindrop that falls in Minnesota can travel all the way down the Mississippi River and make it to New Orleans. Next time it rains, use your observational skills and see where the water travels. We can even collect and reuse rainwater for sustainable and environmentally friendly projects. At the Louisiana Children's Museum, we have a big cistern that collects rainwater so we can use it later, like to water all of our plants. Write down some other ideas of how we can collect and reuse rainwater. See if you can draw out the water cycle using pictures. Hi! So today, we learned all about the water cycle, where rain comes from, and how we can practice sustainability by reusing that rainwater. We would love to see examples of your visible thinking and learning. Post your pictures or videos of your learning process by tagging us at Louisiana Kids or using hashtag LCM Connections. Thank you for joining me for Connections at Home. My name is Hannah and I hope you'll join us for our next episode. Until then, let's play, learn, and stay connected.